Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today on GROW's Coronavirus or COVID-19 Monitoring Kit. My name is Will Asnado, and I'm joined today by my colleague, John Haynes. Hi, everyone. We're both senior, yeah, we're both senior research analysts at GROW Intelligence. We work to put this kit together and regularly produce analysis displays and insights for GROW. Please don't hesitate to submit questions during the presentation using a control panel, and we will answer them at the end. We will also make a recording of this webinar available afterwards. Today's webinar will explain how to use GROW's COVID-19 monitoring kit. We'll go through the resources available and how you can use them. Some background on where we are about two months into the coronavirus outbreak. We will look at potential supply shocks on the horizon. And throughout, we'll describe how the COVID-19 monitoring kit and GROW's platform can help you piece it all together. What we're going to discuss today is only a snapshot of what's available in the kit, and the kit is only a subset of examples of what's available in GROW. If anyone wants to follow up after the webinar to discuss the kit, help creating charts, or how GROW can apply to their business, we're happy to schedule one-on-ones. First, a brief intro to GROW Intelligence. Many of you are familiar with us, but for those who are not, GROW takes vast amounts of agricultural related data, standardizes and organizes it in order to build forecast models and gain insights while allowing clients to add their own proprietary data to enhance the analysis. The goal is to better is to enable better, faster decisions about anything affecting the agriculture industry. We do this by collecting 55 million data series across public, licensed, and proprietary sources. Sources vary from satellites to governments to commodity exchanges and private data sources for a truly unique platform. Now I'll turn over to my colleague, John, to explain what's in our COVID-19 kit. Thanks, Will. Um, welcome, and I'm just a reminder to add questions to the queue and we'll answer them at the end. I'll start today by explaining our goals in producing the COVID-19 kit. As coronavirus spreads globally, the potential impact really can't be understated. Uncertainty and reduced consumer demand have led to historic moves in financial markets and sparked a crude oil price spat between major producing countries. The outbreak has disrupted global shipping and consumer demand at a time when the agricultural economy is already working its way through a series of shocks. In introducing our COVID-19 monitoring kit, GROW aims to highlight the broad and nuanced impact that the outbreak will have on both global and local agricultural markets. The kit's available on our website at info.growintelligence forward slash COVID kit. It's a combination of the different products we produce at GROW, and it aims to provide direct insights into the effect the outbreak is having. First, displays in GROW's web app can be used to track and monitor data sets like crop health, trade, crop production, and prices. The information can be downloaded and displays can be embedded into your own website. Second, it includes a handful of relevant insights we've produced. We publish written insights weekly, giving you access to expertise of one of the best teams of agriculture analysts in the business. Finally, it includes predictive models that can be run using Grow, the GROW API. Our API lets you build your own models or run models GROW's already built, and it allows you to incorporate your own proprietary data along with GROW's data. Next, we'll show you how the data analyses and models in the monitoring kit help paint a picture of where global agriculture is today, two months into the coronavirus outbreak, as Will said. Throughout, I'll highlight the chart or map found within the monitors in the COVID-19 kit. As Will said, you'll find much more depth in the if you explore the kit on our website. I'll start with China, where COVID-19 hit during the Lunar New Year holidays. That's right when consumer demand in China would normally peak. Lockdowns suppressed consumer demand during the normally festive, busy festive holiday period, and logistics stalled. The chart here shows the coronavirus's impact on economic activity in China. Here we show weekly soybean crush in the country, and it's broken down by province. 
A two-week drop in crush is normal during the New Year holiday. This year, the coronavirus outbreak slowed crush below 1 million tons per week for three weeks. With crush shut down for nearly a month, supply of soy products like animal feed were tight, and it was another cut to Chinese demand for world soybeans. We're also releasing our own China Agriculture Price Index shortly, and we'll add it to the kit then. It uses 110 different products. The index leads official CPI numbers and reporting, or the reporting of those numbers by two months, and it will be updated every day. It allows you to track inflation and economic health across China in near real time. The chart here shows GROWS Index versus China's official food CPI. Next, we'll highlight users' ability to monitor trade in GROW. Uncertainty caused by COVID-19 has already slowed shipping of agricultural products like corn and soybeans to East Asia. Japan, South Korea, and China are already drawing down domestic reserves, and it will be important to monitor food supplies in those countries that import a significant portion of their needs. Shipping from export centers in the Americas to East Asia takes 30 to 40 days, roughly, so there's little room for logistical difficulties. In the chart highlighted here, you can see monthly export volumes of corn to Japan. They've been weak to start the year. Grow users can see the figures update as trade data comes in to better understand Japanese supply and demand. The impact is not only seen on the importer side of the equation. Our kit also analyzes the impact on major exporters who see growing piles of grain sitting at ports. Included in the kit are a monitor of soybean exports from Brazil and a monitor of weekly export flow of U.S. corn to Korea. We also have a monitor of monthly grain imports into China. An assessment of the current state of global agriculture would be incomplete without a look at the impact of African swine fever. The shocks in agricultural markets caused by African swine fever, or ASF, are still being felt. The disease decimated hog herds in China. Hog and pork prices remain very high in the country as the outbreak of COVID-19 spreads. The chart here shows the first signs of tightening pork supply in the first quarter of 2019. And we see the rise in hog, price, hog cash prices in China from about 10 to 15 renminbi per kilogram in 2018 to a 35 to 40 renminbi per kilogram range today. The increase in pork prices led to a shift in protein consumption from pork to chicken in China. Reduced hog feeding caused a significant decline in Chinese soybean demand and disrupted grain demand patterns globally. Markets are not only still adjusting to that, but it's far from clear that we've seen the largest disruptions. ASF is now spreading within Asia, and a recent outbreak was seen within a few kilometers of Germany, the world's second largest pork meat exporter. That could result in reduced demand for European pork if, ASF out, if an ISF outbreak leads to import bans. The chart from the kit here shows monthly export volumes from major producers. It shows total exports among that group and also the shift between those origins. Next, we'll fill in the supply side of the equation. Reduced Chinese grain demand and ballooning global stocks have pushed prices on the Chicago Board of Trade lower, but it hasn't slowed global production that much. Our seven crop models are included in the monitoring kit. They allow you to monitor grain production in major producing countries in real time. Climate factors that drive the models and the model outputs are updated every day. Grows crop models for developing crops in Brazil and Argentina are most relevant today. The US models will be important in the months ahead. Here you can see Grows current output for Brazilian soybean yields presented at the district level. In the web app, you can see Grows estimate its current estimate for each district in Brazil. Our model currently estimates production at 121 million tons at the national level. In Argentina, grows yield estimate points to a 49.5 million ton crop. We'll also soon be launching a corn yield model for China, and we'll add that to the kit then. Now we'll move to a group of supply disruptions we see on the horizon that will further complicate the impact of COVID-19. We're already monitoring them. In the United States, COVID-linked market anxiety has sent prices tumbling on the CBOT. Corn and soy futures are near contract lows, and prices are diving just as farmers ready for the 2020 planting season. 
Weak prices could cause farmers to cut their planting intentions or shift to more profitable crops than corn and soybeans. On top of that, we're seeing high soil moisture levels in parts of the U.S. Corn Belt. Soil moisture levels shown in some key growing areas are at historically high levels. The U.S. National Weather Service expects significant Midwest flooding this year. That's increased the risk that flooding could prevent planting for a second year in a row. The chart here shows corn area that was prevented from being planted in 2019. The impact was most notable in the Dakotas, but it's also very high across a lot of the Corn Belt. Um, last year, Grow built a model to predict prevent plant acreage ahead of the USDA's release. It's available in our GitHub and API clients can run the models themselves. We'll start running the model in mid-April to assess the risk this year. The COVID-19 monitoring kit also includes a display in the web app where you can monitor U.S. growing conditions that may contribute to planting delays and prevention this year. Another disruption that will need to be monitored along with COVID-19's outbreak is insect damage this year. The Horn of Africa is seeing its largest invasion of desert locusts in decades, and the impact can be seen in satellite-derived vegetation measures in GROW. Our NDVI vegetative health data provides users with real-time insight into plant health and crop condition globally. Here, you can see the dramatic drop in vegetative health in East Africa from mid-December to, to early March. Locust swarms crossed from Somalia into Kenya in mid-December. Locust populations are growing as the main East African growing season is set to begin. We'll have a crop production model. We'll have crop production models for East Africa available in the kit shortly. Poor harvests would drive a significant increase in the demand for imported wheat. The impact is expected to extend to India by June, and GROW's yield model for India wheat will be a key tool in assessing the country's harvest prospects. At the same time, fall armyworms are spreading in China again. Fall armyworms feed on corn, rice, wheat, and sugarcane crops. Last year, in anticipation of the spread of fall armyworm in China for the first time, GROW developed a model to estimate risk in China's corn production from, FA, from uh, fall armyworm infestation. Here you can see the model's output late last year, showing the likelihood of fall armyworm's impact on corn by province. Now, as the growing season begins, GROW will monitor the spread of fall armyworms in China, and we've included in the COVID-19 kit that model. Fall armyworm have already been reported in Sichuan province. It's a piece of the picture that will drive global agriculture along with COVID-19 in the months ahead. Finally, we'll pull all these elements together by looking at price implications. The impact of COVID-19 and the numerous elements presented in the monitor kit will drive prices for some time to come. Gross kit includes several displays that allow users to follow price developments. Prices are a good indicator of how all the supply and demand elements fit together. As you can see here, uh, FOB soybean price monitor from the kit lets users compare prices offered at major soybean exporting ports. What, st what stands out at first looking at this is the impact of the US-China trade war in 2018. As China cut off US suppliers, soybean prices in South America were able to strengthen due to the shift in demand. Today, demand reduction and snarled logistics have suppressed prices at origin. Prices tell us a lot about what's going on in global agriculture. Soybean export prices also allow you to predict where buyers like China will source their soybean needs. We also have an analysis of the price relationship between corn and soybeans in the U.S. in the kit, monitoring the relationship between those two prices allows you to predict U.S. farmer planning decisions. If adverse weather conditions arise, those prices will adjust to correct the incentives. And we have a display highlighting Chinese vegetable oil imports and price. It allows you to see changes that might foreshadow a change in Malaysian palm oil markets, for example. On top of that, API users can access daily cash prices in China to assess the country's progress, rebuilding its devastated hog, devastated hog industry. Progress has been impacted by the coronavirus outbreak and GROW lets you clarify the interactions between ASF and coronavirus. And finally, another potential impact of the COVID-19 outbreak on agriculture can be seen through the impact the disease is having on crude oil. Slowing economic activity has pushed crude oil prices lower and spurred a conflict between Saudi Arabia and Russia. 
That's caused a historically large decline in global crude oil prices, and it's likely to restrict global demand for biodiesel. In the US, gasoline prices have dropped far more than ethanol prices have, and blending margins are getting squeezed. Blending demand for ethanol and gasoline has been strong in recent weeks, and you can see here that ethanol, that weekly ethanol production in the US has been seasonally strong. That's likely to change shortly and will have a bearish impact on corn prices. Ethanol demand has been a point of optimism for US corn prices. It makes up about 40% of corn demand. Last month, the in the US, last month the USDA raised its estimate for corn demand for ethanol by 50 million bushels. In Brazil, where ethanol, sugar, and gasoline prices are highly linked, lower crude oil prices will mean weaker demand for fuel ethanol and greater sugar production. In Malaysia, where palm prices have, been, have declined on weaker Chinese demand already, the widening spread between palm and crude oil prices will significantly reduce demand for palm-derived biodiesel. All of these dynamics can be monitored using the gross COVID-19 monitoring kit. And now I'll pass it back to Will for some concluding remarks. Thanks, John. In conclusion, our kit aims to capture the deep analysis we've already done here at Grow, but there's much more to be found on our platform where you can build displays and monitors of your own, or you can adjust and tweak our displays or models to better suit your needs. You can access the Corona kit at the website listed here, or you can go directly in the web app, click on curated displays on the panel on the left-hand side and search for coronavirus or COVID-19. As a reminder, this is only a portion of what's available on GROW. We cover a wide range of crops and analysis. If anyone wants to follow up after the webinar to discuss the kit or how GROW can apply to their business, please reach out to schedule one-on-one. -on -one. And reach out with any questions about access to any models or data at intel at growintelligence.com. Now let's take a minute to collect questions on the presentation, which you can submit using the panel uh, for, the, for the webinar. Uh, and if we don't get to your question, we will get back to you individually with a response. Thanks. Okay, uh, first question. Uh, what is the biggest impact you've seen so far from COVID-19 on U.S. ag? So I think the biggest impact at the moment has been the effect it's had on prices in the U.S. So you've seen increased risk for um, or potentially in, redu increased risk, we've seen increased risk that China might not be buying and the economic activity in China and also Asia and really globally um, will be suppressed. And so that's affected prices. And you've also seen just general uh, movement out of uh, movement of money out of financial markets in general, and that's affected corn and soybeans um, and agricultural crops in general. Those are the most highly traded ones. Um, so that has suppressed prices and it's has a big impact now that we move into the U.S. growing season with prices suppressed and risks of potential flooding as well. We have a question on uh, some of the data sources that we have and what are the date ranges that have gone into some of these models? So it's very varied, um, and we can get back to you and more specifics on that. If you're in the web app, if you're looking at a display um, or a monitor in the web app, you can see the date range if you go to edit, and it'll show you the, the range of data available for that specific series. If you have anything specific or some questions about that, please do email us at intel at growintelligence.com, and we can get back to you quickly on um, the specific date ranges of things. But it's, I mean, it's satellite data goes back, um, for really a lot of the series go back very far. Brazilian IBGE um, data goes back to 1974 for every municipality production of corn and soybeans. Um, so it's really extensive. Uh, another question, uh, how can pesticide companies use your model around pest infestations? He said again, well, that I didn't catch the end. Yeah, sorry, how can the pesticide companies use uh, our uh, pest infestation models? Oh, sure. So it, with the fall armyworm model, for example, what we did was our data science, our data scientists came up with 
Um, basically, it was uh, similar to U.S. growing degree days, if anyone's familiar with that, which is the growth cycle of corn. But there's a very similar metric that can be used, uh, pest degree days, for the life cycle of the pests and its temperature and climate dependent, mostly temperature dependent. So what the model did was it looked at the life cycle of the pest and how that, um, and then the spread of the pests moving northward into China. Um, and then that was overlaid with the crop where we were specifically targeting corn here. Um, so you had the crop mass for corn. And so we could combine those pieces and put together the risk of the insects affecting um, corn in China. So the connection there with pesticide, of pesticide companies, for example, would be um, noting where risks exist and where um, measures might need to be taken and in what specific regions that would happen and what timeline that would occur over. Um, a question based on models. Are there predictions of when supply and demand will regularize? So the crop models, the production models, um, don't deal with demand um, in, unless there is some component of price in them, which there generally isn't. So the production model um, is based on geospatial data, climate indicators, and also uh, specific placement of that district on the globe. So latitude and longitude are important as well. And the models predict what the yield will be at the end of the year, what the final yield is based on conditions so far to date and how those relate to historical conditions. We have two sort of related questions. Um, can you talk specifically about the shortages in Asia and what are the risks for South American trade? So we're just starting to see it. Um, and it's not, for example, you can see, we, as we showed, um, the demand of imports into, well, basically the exports from the US to Japan and South Korea are starting to show some impacts. And you've seen some impacts on Malaysian palm oil prices, are probably the, the cleanest, the clearest example of an impact from China reduced demand. Um, but it's all, all just starting, which is why the monitoring kit's important. So you have to monitor it and see where the impacts go. Um, like I said before, the impact on, I mean, the biggest, it reduced economic demand and reduced consumption. For example, lower um, outings at restaurants link is linked to lower fat usage and low oil usage. So all these things fit together. And then that lower demand means lower prices that should incentivize farmers to plant fewer crops. Um, but we don't necessarily see that. So we have to watch that ahead as well in what the farmer planning intentions are, because we could see another year where we continue to grow large crops and we just continue to build the surpluses, even though the supply isn't there. Another question, uh, how has the virus and oil crisis disrupted the US trade, US-China trade relations and the implementation of phase one? So this is a little bit, I think maybe in terms of the implementation of phase one, it's given China a little bit of a break in terms of um, maybe extended the timeline on when it's gonna be fully implemented and eased, um, the speed at which it'll probably be implemented. I think it gives China a little bit of a break to slow down and maybe not uh, rush if they were going to um, in increasing their demand from the United States. So it probably extends the time period and maybe pushes it out a quarter at this moment. But it's again, it's, it's something we have to watch. Uh, are there any risks identified for agriculture in West Africa, particularly Ghana and Nigeria? There's nothing here. Um, one thing that might be connected to countries like Nigeria, for example, would be impacts of the crude oil, of crude oil affecting currency and maybe affecting trade there. Um, but other than that, there's nothing in the kit that involves West Africa. It didn't um, pop up as a, um, as a, you know, a main example that would be good for the Corona kit that would be widely useful, but we can certainly work with you um, to hone in on the risks for West Africa one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We'd be happy to do that. Question about the models, uh, if they're interactive for the users to perform what if analysis? What analysis? Like scenario analysis. Oh, 
Yeah, so there's lots of a lots of flexibility in the web app and the monitors. So when you use them, if you click on one of the monitors, um, or if you search for one of the curated displays in the web app, or if you click on one of the monitors in the kit on the website, um, you can add that. You can then add it to your own Grow profile, basically, and you can use that and then adjust it and edit it, change it. You can get rid of things that you don't like or are not necessarily important to you and add pieces of information that you'd like to dive deeper on. Um, it's all very flexible. Uh, the data is downloadable um, as well into Excel where you can make manipulations or if you have the API, you can download snippets and code you know, some um, manipulations that you'd like to do there in the API. Another question is, are there any leading indicators uh, that would front run an increase in price volatility that we can track with Grub? So we're adding the China um, CPI or Grow Agricultural Food Index shortly, and that might be an important series, an important index that Grow's producing that can help you um, get a better sense of what's going on dynamically in China. It comes out about two, it comes out, it's gonna come out two months before the China uh, official data comes out and it's updated daily based on any changes that we've already seen in the in the data where it's coming into grow. There's 110 different prices that are in that index. Uh, bulk grain shipments getting delayed or canceled. Yeah, so we can see that in the export sales report from the USDA. Um, we don't have weekly exports from Brazil or lineups at the moment. We are looking into maybe adding that. Um, right now, you can see from the United States, you can see the export sales, the accumulated sales, and the accumulated shipments, and also sales that have not yet been shipped. And we can, and you can monitor when those numbers change, and anything canceled gets canceled. A question about the locusts in Africa. Uh, does the problem uh, seem under control or is it continuing to spread to other countries and regions? So it is, it's not necessarily under control. I mean, we've seen when I first, when we first put out an insight on this topic um, about a month ago, um, you could see a clear drop in vegetation um, from mid December to mid February, and it just continues to get the color on the vegetative index map available in GROW just keeps getting paler, more yellow, and the green keeps dropping. And so it seems that as we move into the heart, the plant, the main producing production period, that it's going to continue to, um, for the, the population continues to increase. It's also expected that this is going to extend um, across to India as their growing season um, starts. So it's going to be important to monitor. It does continue, it does look like it's continuing to expand. Okay, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, once again, uh, if we didn't get to your question, we'll follow up uh, with you individually. Um, and uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us at intel at growintelligence.com for any questions uh, about how to navigate the kit, um, uh, inquiries about API access uh, to be able to use uh, these models, uh, some of the models that are only available on the API, um, to enhance your analysis and combine it with proprietary data you may have. Uh, but any questions about uh, how to navigate this data and anything we can help you with uh, would be w much welcome. Thank you again for joining us. And, Thank you. Uh, w and once again, um, uh, there'll be a uh, replay of this available.